to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is where we believe that the most radical thing you can, can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. I think we remember the story of Aslan in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And he said, I'm a good lion, but that doesn't mean I'm a tame lion. And uh, I think if you looked at our next guest right now, he doesn't look very tame. He looks more like a Viking. A Viking. Okay, I'm going to describe him for you. Those of you who are listening by radio, I'm not going to tell you who he is yet, but those of you who are listening by radio, uh, too bad for you because some people are watching this on YouTube because we have the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. You can go there and subscribe and watch these on video too. And of course, all of the uh, podcast apps too. But our, our guest, I will describe you to him. He's wearing a Viking beard, red, probably, probably related to, to Life Erickson or Eric the Red. Uh, <clears throat> he has a t-shirt with Darth Vader stand, sitting in a, standing in the middle between two Santa Claus guys with, with what are those guys called? The stormtroopers with the white, uh, very Christmassy. <laughs> and then down below it says something about your lack of Christmas cheer is causing me a disturbance. I find your lack of cheer disturbing. Disturbing. Uh, but so... The one thing that will describe him best for all of you is, can you raise your right, your, your right hand and let us see your watch? I have a feeling that it is an iPhone. Ah, I guessed it. Okay, what is that watch on your hand? And then we'll tell people who you are. <laughs> it's, this is a Fitbit. Um, which one is it? It's not the Versa. It's the Fitbit Iconic. You do. You Fitbit got the Blaze. Best. Fitbit Blaze. That's it. Oh, okay, so now. Yep. I got so, the blaze. So this is this is exactly that watch defines him. And by the way, I think that watch may be under the <laughs> Christmas tree for me this year. I'm wearing my little Fitbit thing, but I think that exact watch may be under my Christmas tree. But that watch describes Pete Socks perfectly because there's this manliness and there's this nerdiness that goes together, kind of right. I mean, because you're a book you're a book lover you're a book lover like me. Yeah. And the cool thing about that watch is it's the wa it's kind of like the watch for the fitness nerd. I don't know how to say that quite. I mean, you're far from a nerd, but I mean, you know, it's kind of like that watch. For, like, I like to watch what my heart rate is. I like to watch yeah. how many steps I've done that day. And that one, I think, could go in the water, right? Uh, no, not this one. The newest version can. Yeah, so you guys, I know you guys are just wondering, who in the heck is this guest? This is a good friend of ours, uh, Pete Sox. Pete, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Good to be here, Bear. Uh, Pete ha wears a lot of different hats, but yeah, you could describe him as kind of this Viking, uh, but also media marketing expert and loves books and uh, has has done something so significant for our ministry with the Kennedy Brown Rig Company, he, who he also works with. He, uh, he does our, our weekly newsletters for us, for us. It just kind of keeps us, keeps us in, the, in the public eye. So Pete Sox, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, it's good to be here, Bear. I'm glad we could finally connect in, uh, on the show and be able to chat. Yeah, actually, we have, we have to do this more often, I think. I can't yeah. believe we haven't done this before. Um, uh, so, Pete, let's go back to this watch. <laughs> 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 what, I mean, it really says a lot about you that, you've, that you're wearing that watch. Uh, and I'm not trying, not, not trying to do a promotion for Fitbit, but it, it, it's a way of uh, disciplining and regulating and staying on target. What 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 goals does it help you to do in, in your physical life? Uh, step trackers, a lot of, a lot of things that, that, um, even before I worked for, for the Kennedy Browner group, I had a, a desk job and, and it kind of forces you to get up, move and, and at least get your steps in if nothing else and, and monitor your heart rate and stuff like that. Plus it has the nice feature of, um, uh, alerting you when emails come in and notifications. So it helps yeah. Helps me keep on top of that. And text messages. And, and yep. you know, one of the most interesting things that I think it does, at least for me, is it monitors my sleep. Yes, does that too. It was a wake-up yep. call. For, I mean, hey, that's a pretty good joke. It was a wake-up <laughs> call for me um, how little sleep I was actually getting. Yeah, or, or even, even when you're restless and moving, it can pick that up too. 
Yeah, it knows when you're up for ten minutes in the middle of the night, or or yep. when you're actually doze off, or when you actually get up. And and I have now I have a sleep goal every day too, not just a, a steps goal. And I try to reach that. I try to get in seven hours because I know it's so good for me. Mm, yeah, doesn't always happen for that way. sure. Doesn't yeah. always happen that way. But uh, yeah, I mean, but there's something about you as a man uh, that uh, are are you wearing that watch for a reason because you want to have you want to have a fit a fitness protocol. Uh, not just be successful in your business or a successful father, but that fitness protocol really sets the sets the stage so that you can be successful in those other areas. So yeah, right now everybody's probably just about had their Christmas dinner or around that time of year. So give a give us your, <laughs> your give us your fitness regimen. Uh, basically, I just I try to move once a week. I go to the gym when I can fit it in. Uh, my daughter plays tennis, so she's in a in a program at her local Y. So I go in there and I hit the treadmill and the bike and stuff, and and just just try to move because as I was winding down my 20 year career in uh, the factory where I worked in quality control before I before I left there, I got hit with a pretty bad case of sciatica. So I had to get that worked out with the chiropractor, and and you know. Movement was the way to do it. So, I'm not saying I'm the most fit human being in the world. I don't go surfing or anything like that. Uh, but it, it's just moving to to make sure you're not stationary in that sitting position all day long, which will tear you up. Yeah, I, I know. I I see so many young people, especially I'll see them, you know, at the beach in Hawaii or whatever, and they have their short, their neck kind of hangs forward a little bit. Cause yeah. They, they, all they do is spend time on the computer. What about uh, one of the things I like about that 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 watch that you're wearing? Is that it? Rem- it lets you know it, it wants you every hour to get up and move at least 250 steps. Yeah, just to yep. kind of keep your joints loose and your muscles moving, and not, you know, giving them a chance to kind of breathe a little bit. Right, and you know, the other thing that I found, uh, you know, advantage because my work is on a computer, pretty much all day, um, is uh, is a desk riser, so that I can actually lift up the lift the desk up and stand. So I'm not sitting in that position, staring down all day long. So that's been pretty helpful as well. So you vary it then, right? Yes. Yep. Wow. That's really, I, I never, I never thought I could do the desk riser thing. It's like, I start thinking the middle minute I sit down, I never thought I could do it. I wonder if I should try that. It's, it's actually worth a try. I got a desktop model that actually sits on my desk that, uh, it has a lever on the side. You just raise and lower it to whatever height you want. So I can go from sitting those. to standing. Yeah, I've looked into those. You and I live kind of a parallel life, I think, <laughs> in some ways. Yeah, but fitness is so important, and it doesn't mean you have to be a fitness nut. But right. it's important that you that you train your body uh, to do what you need for it to do for you, you know, and to be good to it. Uh, and and right now, we're just, everybody's probably hearing this around the time they fed themselves too much during the holidays. So. <laughs> but you know, if you get up every hour and you walk 250 steps, you actually are going to walk at least an extra mile a day. Mm-hmm. It's twenty five hundred steps. It's a mile, right? So, yeah. And if you if people can get in four miles of walking during a day, um, it'll be better for them, much better. For oh them. yeah, for sure. You know, I've been I've been lately. I've been bicycling with 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 Cindy, and we take off. Uh, you know what motivates us, Pete? No. I... Is first of all, we're doing this in in Florida. We live here half the year. We're doing this on extremely flat ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't have to go up hills. And at the end of the seven mile ride, you know, is breakfast. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we cruise there to a little di- a little diner over there and have a a high protein, low carb breakfast, and then and then pedal back. And that's a great way to start the day. And but it's the same thing with your spiritual life, isn't it? Don't you have a a a, a spiritual protocol that you you practice during the week? Yeah, I mean, you know, that involves. I try to get to daily mass as often as I can. Uh, some days the workload doesn't allow that, but. I try to do it as often as I can. I'm I'm in a rather unique uh, locale here where we have about uh, eight parishes in a 10 mile radius, um, so it's pretty flexible to get to one. And if I really want to, uh, so I try to do that. I do spiritual reading, uh, liturgy of the hours in the morning. Try you, to do it at night. Uh, what What do you do in the morning? What part of the liturgy do you do in the morning? I usually do the morning prayer in the morning, um, and then at some point during the day, usually in the evening, I'll, I'll try to get the officer readings in because that's that's pretty diverse. I love that. Uh, I love yeah. that office of readings. Yep. Hey, do you do that with a Laudate app or Universalis, or are you doing? Are you reading it? 
I do the old school in the book, flip the ribbons. I love that. Don't you? <laughs> don't you? Don't you love that? Yeah. But you need yeah, a computer. I mean, the, <laughs> the app's good for convenience. So if you're not used to doing allergy hours, I would highly suggest a latte app. Um, it's free because uh, it's right there at your fingertips. But there's something about having a book in your hand and actually flipping the pages and reading it on the pages. And plus, um, I'm staring at a computer all day long, so I need to yeah. get away from it. Well, you know, I got to tell you, there's something about that. I don't know what it's called, but that Catholic font, you know, that yeah. you find in the midst of it. <laughs> it just makes you feel like you got to pray. I mean, I love when I do that. But uh, for me, I use the Laudate Universalis. Yes. To help me get my ribbons right. You know, okay, that's where we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, I, I love the, you know, you know, you and I both know, we, we both love the Liturgy of the Hours. But when I first started praying it, my dad got me hooked on it, right? And uh, and, I, and I would skip the Office of Readings. I don't want to read the writings of those old people. I want to hear something new that's mm -hmm. up to date. And I, lear I learned uh, I was quite wrong. We're talking with Pete Sox. We're going to be right back. This is Bear with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We feel that now more than ever, uh, a radio show, a TV show is is needed that emphasizes manly virtue. Uh, we don't even talk about masculine virtue anymore because nowadays that word's been uh, stolen and used uh, uh, along the gender spectrum somewhere. Uh, we uh, challenge men and we bring men to our show that will challenge men and encourage men, mobilize men. To, to manly virtue. And we want you to know um, that we have our TV show, Long Ride Home, Season 1, which is pretty gritty. It's a 10-episode series where, where we, we roll thunder out on motorcycles from Cocoa Beach, Florida to, to San Diego. And uh, we uh, stop in front of the brothels in Houston and we carry a cross and pray the rosary. And we spend time in the, the big band country of Texas. And in that process, this band of brothers become actually become a band of brothers and we uh, and we it forges relationships, and you'll see the men being transparent, a little bit a little bit more open than they may want it to be. And so it's a very gritty show. Uh, but now you may have gotten a few of the episodes while it was on EWTN or on the Armed Forces Network, but you can go to Prime Video and iTunes and Google Play, and you can power watch all ten episodes with your family, uh, or, you know, or or over the course of a week or two. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com. And you can find out more about how you can uh, link to those, uh, those, um, the Long Ride Home season. But the other thing you can do is you can do my friend Pete Sox a favor. Pete Sox is our guest today. He is actually the man behind our weekly newsletter that uh, will give you hints about where to go to find uh, the latest, my latest book or, or the TV show and, or where I'm speaking and, and just kind of trying to bring us all together uh, and uh, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to that newsletter. Wouldn't you like that, Pete, if all that work you're doing, people would... Uh, yeah. Would Take advantage of it. It's there for you. Yeah, we're talking with Pete, Pete Sox, and uh, apparently he's a Star Wars fan because uh, whenever I see him, <laughs> he, seems, he seems to think I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm a disturbance in the force or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Pete, welcome back to the, well, welcome to the show, and you mean so much to me personally, and and, and to the people who are with who follow our ministry. So, Pete, tell us a little bit about um, your. Uh, we, we were talking about your your regimen. I, I, I spied that 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 watch, the Fitbit watch. Mm -hmm. You have your physical regimen, and then you have the spiritual regimen. Yeah. For people who don't know what the liturgy, of the hours is, and you and I both love to pray the liturgy. Can you explain that to them in 10 words or less? Liturgy Hours is the universal prayer of the church. And uh, if you go all in, it's a four-volume set that, that uh, you follow through the liturgical calendar of the year. And it's laid out that when you pray, everyone else in the church that is praying is praying the exact same set of prayers at the exact—well, maybe not the exact same time, but in the same time frame throughout the day. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and, it's and, pretty awesome. And you said one of the things you don't ever miss is praying the Office of Readings. Explain what that part of the liturgy is. So you pray it seven times a day, or maybe you want to just pray it twice or three times a day. But right. one thing you don't miss out on is this wonderful part of the liturgy of the hours called the Office of Readings. Explain what that is. The Office of Readings, um, 
whereas the other offices or other prayers during the day uh, highlight scripture, um, the office of reading dives into writings of the church fathers and, and saints of the church. So you're getting a little bit more uh, deeper, meatier thought of what some past uh, saints of the church have thought and written. It's just, and it, it's, you know, so cool because um, the Catholic church wasn't invented five years ago or 10 years ago. It was it's 2000 no. years. And yeah. I remember when my dad, who's a deacon and I was kind of had drifted away from the church. He sent me a, how to pray the, 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 the one book liturgy of the hours with that little computer, that little printout booklet, of how do you pray it each year? Yep. And I would always skip the office of readings. Like I'd rather read someone more up to date than these guys, St. Athanasius or something. Wow, was I wrong. Once you start reading the early church fathers. Yeah, it's 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 really deep. And, and, you know, it goes beyond just the office of readings. Once you kind of dip your toe in there, then you're you're kind of hungry to do more. <laughs> I know that's the problem. I think, <laughs> I think somewhere on your shelf over there, I think I see the encyclicals of John Paul II. It's blurry. Well, I see, what I got uh, here. Well, I don't. I know what that is. That is the commentary. Yep. The ancient Christian commentary on, on the whole Bible. Yeah. Twenty four, like twenty four volumes or something like that. Right. Yeah, that take. Now, now, do you want me to tell you how I came by getting mine? I heard it on the show, but you can share it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, what, I, I, yeah. Well, you tell me. I mean, well, I, I was in this store in Minneapolis. You, you got lucky. That's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I walked into the store in Minneapolis, uh, Hagen's store there on, in uh, in uh, Stillwater, I think it is, this little town. Mm -hmm. And I'd happened in that store before, and I'd go, wow, these guys have a lot of good books. And then I was having breakfast with Jeff Cavins, and he goes, dude, if you're going to Stillwater for lunch with your wife, you ought to stop in at this little bookstore. It's the best Catholic bookstore in the world. And I go, which one? He goes, he tells me, go, yeah, I think I've been there. And no wonder there was a few good Catholic books. That's all there was in there. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, I saw one volume of that. What is it? Ancient Commentary on the Scriptures? Ancient Christian Commentary on Scripture. And then I saw another one here, another one there. And I, I said, man, I wish, is there any way you could come by a whole set of those? Because it's the... It's the commentary by the early church fathers. Yeah, it's awesome. And he gave me a little business card, and I looked at it, and it gave me five different excuses that I could use to spend $700 on a set of books. <laughs> and one of them is it'll be my next Christmas present. So yeah, my wife got that for me. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm taking the slower approach and getting a volume at a time. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you do that? Actually, through InterVarsity Press, the publisher has a uh, uh, mail program that you uh, sign up for, and they'll ship you one volume a month. That's the perfect way to do it. Yeah, because you can't, I mean, that was a steal what you got there at that price, but to buy all of them at once, you're not going to be able to read them all at once anyway. So the way I'm using it is I'm actually picking um, out of the months they send is I'm picking that particular book of the Bible to be more intentional with Scripture reading. It's so cool. I mean, I think I got a use set. They were like brand new, but they were used. That's why I got that deal. But yeah, because I mean, it, it, what what are you reading now, right now? In, in right now, I'm going through the the Book of Mark, uh, and I'm actually dovetailing that uh, Christian commentary book with the Come and See Catholic Bible Study. Who, do, who uh, prepared have, that? This is uh, Emmaus Road Publishing. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, so if you go to St. Paul Center um, that Scott Hahn has and click through the Emmaus Road Publishing, you can you can find those Catholic Bible studies, um, and they have them set up for each book of the Bible. Some of them are combined for your shorter books, but. Wow! Yeah, I I love that commentary. I know Mike Mike Aquilina right is the, turned you yeah. you onto it too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Mike did. Yeah, so I've, I'm I'm studying the life of St. Paul, so I'm going through the Acts and. And through each of the letters using the commentary too, mm -hmm. but it's just just phenomenal. So Pete, speaking of books, uh, you, you have a, I think you probably have, you're, you're you look like Mike Aquilina there. You're surrounded by books. And <laughs> yeah. And Father Mitch Pacwa's a version of uh, interior decorating his shelves of books in his house too. You know. <laughs> but you have a, a podcast that is dedicated to books. What's the name of that podcast? Right. The name of my podcast is Off the Shelf, and uh, each week I interview a Catholic author, different Catholic author, uh, mainly focusing on newer releases. And that kind of grew out of my original, uh, the way my ministry started in 2012 was I started uh, reviewing Catholic books. Um, you have a blog too, right? 
Yeah, the blog can be found at catholicbookblogger.com. You'll find all my archives there and uh, also Catholic Stan posts my reviews each week as well. Well, you know what? It's like, here, here's the thing. He loves to read. He loves to read. And you know if you're a book blogger, they'll send you the books for free, right? Is that the uh, is that insane. how you – that's the life it's, hack you figured out? It's absolutely insane, Bear. I usually have uh, two to three books showing up in my house every week. It's crazy. Isn't that awesome? Are you yeah. able to get through – how many books do you read a week? I read a book a week. Yeah. Um, so that that's about the best I can do. So they're sending yeah. – they send them in the hopes that I pick one of theirs to review, and I, I do my best to uh, satisfy as many different publishers as I can. Well, here's what here's what upsets me about you is that you haven't written a book yet. <laughs> so you, are you, the, you got, it's got yeah. Go ahead. That's in the that's in the works. That's in the works. I can't say too much about it yet, but yeah, it's in the works in discussions with the publisher right now. Uh, Pete, it's gonna be a beautiful book, you know, because if you're gonna be a writer, you got to be a reader first. Yep. Yeah, uh, we're talking with Pete Socks. Pete, uh, what website? What's the best place for them to find your 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 podcast? Well, the best place to find my podcast is to go to breadboxmedia.com. Uh, I'm general manager there, and we can talk more about that in the next segment or or whenever you want about what Breadbox Media is all about. But you can find off the shelf at breadboxmedia.com. And if you if you were to ever join Bears Man Cave, which you have to do by going to my website deepadventure.com, it's a Men's only secret group, real very secretive Facebook group, but you can't join by going to Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com to join. But if, you, if, you, if we let you become a member, then Pete generally posts his show there too, don't you? I try to. Yeah, yeah it's so cool. We're talking with Pete Sox. He's also the gentleman behind our, our weekly newsletter, which is a really important gig because you've got to understand what our ministry is about, present the ministry the way we, we, the Lord has given it to us, and uh, draw people into uh, you know going deeper with, with manly virtue and following what we're up to. So we appreciate uh, Pete Sox. So we'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and I want to first, I want to thank uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They're the largest uh, credit union, I think, in the, in the world, Catholic credit union in the world. Tom Gripe and the people there, Reba and, and all the people there, um, they do such a great job. Um, the, 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 the Notre Dame Federal Credit Union is, is actually amazing. They have so many different avenues of service and so many different uh, uh, we, ways to communicate with them, and I, I, when I, when they were going to become one of our sponsors, I actually went there and uh, I just bought a, was getting a new car, a new used car in Hawaii, and I thought I'm going to see how they do with the financing, and without telling them that I was, they were going to be our sponsor and that I knew the CEO, they were amazing. The people there that helped me were just, just did a great, great job. And this is in the middle while I'm filming Long Ride Home season three in Hawaii, and. Uh, in a di different time zones and they made it happen so they can take care of you wherever you are. So we love, we love our, we love our, uh, our, our sponsor, Notre Dame federal credit union and also solidarity health share. Uh, part, part of my family is on their health share plan, which is a total alternative to health insurance. Uh, and it's Catholic based. So the type of coverage that you're getting is, is uh, true to Catholic teaching where they're not, they don't uh, support, a contraception, they don't support abortion, they don't support euthanasia, things like that. So they're just a really great uh, company to Solidarity Health. And you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and hook up with them. Uh, we're talking with Pete Sox, who is, uh, who's wearing his, uh, if you w were watching this on the Bear Wozniak uh, YouTube channel, you see he's wearing his, his Star Wars Christmassy shirt with Darth Vader in the middle and two uh, of the stormtroopers the, on either side. And what does it say down below again? It says, I find your lack of cheer disturbing. <laughs> so the, the disturbance <laughs> in the force. So, uh, so Pete, tell us more. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. You know, book, people that write books, you know, they, they think of them as being bookish people, bookworms. They don't have a lot to say other than with their writing. Have you ever had a really bad interview where you just couldn't? Nah, I, most most uh, authors are pretty 
pretty talkative. I mean, I've had a couple um, older authors will say that are less uh, that, that seem a little intimidated by the fact that they're being interviewed for a podcast. They don't even know what a podcast is. Mm. Um, so it, it then it becomes a little more pressure on me as the interviewer to pull the answers out of them a bit and kind of steer the ship. But most times the, the ship sets sail and it sails pretty good for an hour. That's the way it goes, huh? It just kind of flows, doesn't it? Yeah, usually. Yeah, yep. I, I remember one of my first radio shows. I think it was before it was a radio show when it was a podcast. And I interviewed, and it was about, it was about anything I wanted to talk about. So I was interviewing a tandem surfing couple. And I'll tell you, all I got was yes and no's out of them for an hour. <laughs> so the, the, the key to having a great radio show is to have great guests, and that's why we have Pete Sox on our show. What are, what are, the, what are the books that, the books that uh, you really uh, fell in love with in the, in the, in the last, uh, this last year? Well, this last year, um, you had Jeff on the show, and I got to tell you, if, if you guys haven't tried out the uh, Great Adventure Bible, this thing is awesome. Pick, pick it up and show us. Right there it is. Uh, it is loaded with, with the timeline. If you've heard of the, the Great Adventure timeline, it's in there. Um, one of the things really cool about this, I don't know if you can see it, but the edges are color-coded to match the timeline so you know what area you're at uh, in regards to Jeff's timeline. He's worked on for 30, 30 years now, I think. Jeff I wanna, Cavins. Don't want to yeah. date Jeff Cavins older than what he is, but I think it's 30 years that he's been working on the timeline. Yeah, he's not that old. He rode his motorcycle 1,200 miles in one day this year. Yeah, time. I heard. Do you know, do you know what, Pete? That Bible is my favorite Bible ever. Yeah. So I is. left my copy in Hawaii thinking I could order another copy, and it was out of they, they had to, it was out of print out of, already. Yeah. Within the first yeah, month, it, so they reprint. It, yep. That book, you know how, like, if you hold a gun or a, a tennis racket like your daughter does, mm -hmm. they have to fit, right? It's just there's some rackets, they just fit. Yep. That book, the weight of it even. Yeah. And, and the, the color notes. of it. Yeah, and the color of it, the leather. The yeah, blue, the blue leather. Do you notice they stole our, our compass? I saw that. <laughs> Actually, so on the, on the front, there's an imprinted compass. And, and you know, it is funny because Jeff is the great adventure and I'm the deep adventure guy. So do you know he and I are going to try to – I think our goal is to shoot season four coming from Cocoa Beach, Florida to Alaska with Jeff. Wow. Yeah, we gotta, cool. yeah we got to meet you as we're, as we're going through. But so uh, what, what other book – have you read Mike Aquilina's new book yet? Uh, yes, the one about the uh... – Ah, oh, the title is escaping villains me right of now. The, villains of yes. the early church or something. Yes, I had him on the other week and we talked about that book. That was a great book. Very timely for what we're seeing in the that, church today. That's why I brought it up. Tell me about that. Tell me all about that. Well, what Mike's writing about it is past people in the church. And, it, and it, it's he has another book that's, that's the same uh, Good Pope, Bad Pope uh, that he wrote a few years ago. I think three or four years ago by now, but it's important for us to realize, you know, we're all concerned and we should be concerned about the current state of the church. We're concerned about how we're going to right the ship and come back on course. But we also need to realize that we have 2000 years of history behind us, that the church has never been broken and the church will never be broken. It just takes the right people to step up to the plate and swing for the fences and fix the problem. And that's kind of what Mike's looking at. You know, you've never had anybody that's successfully been able to break the church. It can't be broken. Um, but I like the way you said that. I think it's really significant what you said is that, I mean, when you, if you're a student of church history, you're a, I mean, of, of the history of Christendom, you're a, you're a student of the Catholic church history. Mm -hmm. And there have been some, like, the, the one that steps out in mind to me the most is the Arian heresy. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because in that case, uh, bishops were ousted, Arian bishops mm -hmm. were put in place, the Arian heresy that well, – why don't you disc explain to us what, what happened there, what Mike had to say about it too? Well, again, yeah. you, you, there was a lot of division in the church in that time, and, and that seems to pop up every few, few centuries. You have this – some contention. I mean, you know, the church, again, gets through that, and it's sometimes necessary – you know, uh, Pope Benedict Cardinal Ratzinger back in 69 said the church is going to shrink before it grows and it'll shrink and become stronger. You know, and at the time, people just kind of skimmed past that and didn't think much about it. But now when you go back and you reread that letter, it's like, uh, OK. Um, so it was a very prophetic 
prophetic letter. And, and you know, uh, the one thing now that, that's happening amongst the laity is there's definitely, you can see a division there. You got people that are outspoken and want to see the church fixed. And then there's another uh, audience of the church that's trying to quiet that. And, and I'm to the point now where I'm more outspoken. Silence has gotten us to where we are now because nobody had the fortitude to stand up and say, look, this is wrong. You know, and, and there was that age old philosophy back in the 60s and 70s that, you know, you never you never spoke out about a priest. You never told him they were wrong because that was bad. But go back to the Bible. Paul did it to Peter all the time. Um, yeah, absolutely. And you, and you think about the Arian heresy, what what the, the Holy Spirit is, is it is his, his church. Yes. Um, and he is bigger than every, everybody, mm. the biggest bully on the block, you know. <laughs> but having said that, the, Ari- the Arian heresy, what I think is so special, unique about that, and applicable about that, is it was, it was within, uh, it was within the, the the bishops were being deposed, other bishop bishops being put in. As Saint Athanasius, I think, was kicked out of his bi- his bishopry twice, and uh, but they battled back, and yes, it's it's right, it's it's right to first take the log out of your own eye. Jesus didn't mm-hmm. say. Don't worry about the splinter in your neighbor's eye. Just worry about the log in your own eye. No, he said, take the log out of your own eye so that you can take the splinter out of out of the other person's eye. And it is time for men, especially, to take leadership. We are praying. The Holy Spirit's in charge. But you have a role to play in this. Exactly. And I'm not saying advocating going out there with pitchforks and flaming, flaming uh, uh, stuff like that. But there's a smart way to go about having your voice be heard and defending the church for the truth that she is. And, and that's where I'm at now. And, you know, yeah, we need to, we need to be able to like father Mark Goring, who's a cast member of long ride home. He's putting together a new group of people. Uh, I don't know for, he doesn't sure what, know what the name is yet, but so that there's a resource. If you hear a certain priest, as I think one of the, one of the, um, I think Strickland talked about it at the last, a bishop's conference. There's a certain priest going around preaching that homosexuality is okay yeah. um, without naming names. If you find out, for example, that that priest is coming to your local neighborhood, you should get 25 people together and go down and talk to the bishop and say, are you aware that this is happening? And we can't, mm-hmm. we, we, we insist on, on faithful teaching of the church. So there is a part that the laity has to play. We're talking with my friend, uh, Pete Sox. He's, uh, he's the one who takes care of our newsletter. He takes care of our ministry in a big way. And he also has his own incredible outreach. We'll be right back with more of Pete Sox. And what is the website that they can go to if they want to listen to the radio show, the podcast? Uh, Breadboxmedia.com. All right, this is The Bear. We'll be right back with more of The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to remind you that uh, we'd love for you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter so you can find out what we're up to. Uh, and also in there, uh, we give you a link to our latest radio show because most, there's, a, I don't know, millions of people listen to this on EWTN, but we also have it on iTunes apps and different podcast apps. Plus, you can watch it on YouTube. And going to YouTube and subscribing to our radio show and then sharing it with your friends can be a really great way to have outreach because it's you know it's, it's people are more inclined to to view it because I mean to listen to it because it has the video version. So right now, if you saw our guest Pete Sox, you would see him uh, uh, surrounded by books and uh, and uh, you know it's just it's just a lot more engaging to 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 listen to a radio show or a podcast that way. So we encourage you to go to our website. Sign up for our newsletter, and uh, you'll get the radio show sent to you. Hey, Pete, when do they get to hear our radio show? Well, oh, if you're watching it on YouTube, you can watch it as soon as it gets uploaded in, in its final edited form. 
or they can listen to it on Saturdays. Uh, the newsletter links to it, links to the YouTube video now, so you can watch the YouTube video. Uh, and then when EWTN airs it, obviously they'll be able to listen to it as well. So if they subscribe, you email them the YouTube version on Saturday morning, and everyone else has yep. to wait till uh, six o'clock Eastern to listen to it on the EWTN network. So yep, yeah. So um, we were talking a little bit more about what's been going on in the church. Your uh, your what what do you feel like? Um, your take is on you're an evangelist too. You you're wanting to move people closer to the Lord to the church. What are you seeing among those that are kind of Catholics that are on the fringes that you've been trying to bring back in, or people that are thinking of converting? What do you see there? There's a lot of people that are frustrated right now, and there's actually you know, there's a little underbelly current of you know of people that when you try to convert them, they're kind of like Catholic Church. Why would I want to do that? You guys are are messed up. So then you need to overcome that with, uh, okay, yeah, there's a problem right now. Again, let's look back at 2,000 years of church history and see where we've been and where we've come and look at this in Scripture that in tradition that shows that this is the church that Christ started. And that's what we need to get back to. We need to get past the newsreel, go back to the history, and, and explain to people interested in joining the church or, or that tell you you're crazy for being in it as to why you're there. One of the things that turns people off the most is pompacity, arrogance, holier than thou. We don't have any right. of that problem anymore, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Not, we, not on we, Facebook or anywhere. <laughs> we do, no, but we just became real to people. And, yeah. when, and I have found people, what, what, here's the thing. People want to engage and talk about this. Yeah, you know, they the, do. You know, the, so what's going on with the church? Okay, well, this they would have never asked you about your church, uh, but in light of the scandal, they're upset or they're or they're curious, and they know that you, you're a person of faith. It opens up the door for minutes. I, I have had more people, more conversations about possible conversions now since this has come up. Uh, I think we should have a reason for great hope. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Again, it, it's a, it's a, you know, I, I run a TMIY group, that manage you group at our parish, and one of the uh, men in the group the other day said, I, I really think we're looking at, a, at another um, um, reformation, in some sense. Um, the church is being purged right now. The church is going through that period of change that we see every once in a while, and we're going to come out in the end better for it. Well. I have confidence in the Holy Spirit, and you know, for so many reasons. One is that um, there's the saying that the the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. We've yeah. had more people martyred in the last century than, I mean, many times over than what happened in the first uh, 1,800 years of the church. More martyrs in the last hundred years than all those combined by far. Uh, the blood crying out, uh, the 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 sacrifice crying out. For God's mercy for the, for the world, and also you know winter has to come before spring, mm -hmm. and John Paul too I think talked about the new spring time in the church. Yeah, yeah, we're we're definitely seeing it. Um, yeah, and not only is it in the church, but our country. It's funny. I was just having a conversation the other day with somebody about this. Our country is paralleling the problems in the church right now. So it's it's like the whole world's askew on its axis, and eventually it'll get rewrited. And we we're, we're generally definitely have a swamp of our own, right, in the church. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to ask you a question. Um, I'm, a, I'm someone that's been kind of following the news a little bit, and I'm, and I'm going to ask you, and uh, I'm going to role play with you a bit. So, okay. man, I, I mean, what's going on with your pope and, and your bishops? I mean, how can you still stay a Catholic? Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why I can still stay a Catholic. It's what brought me in the church in 1990. Uh, six, when my then fiance, now wife, uh, took me to my first mass. It was a Christmas Eve mass, so I jumped in with, with both feet on a Christmas Eve midnight mass in uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, uh, in the historic church there. And it's the Eucharist. I was born and raised in the United Church of Christ. Um, we were not very strong in our faith. We were we were uh, priesters, Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through. Uh, Went through confirmation as a teenager, but, you know, it got to a point where it was, you know, my parents just didn't take me and, and mom was more active than what dad was. And and as I hit uh, teenage, got my wheels at 16, 
17, I started going to church myself, and I just wasn't finding it there in, the, in what I what I was seeking in the United Church of Christ. And when I was introduced to the Catholic Church, uh, the Eucharist was the thing that brought me in. So if you're questioning the Pope, you're questioning the Church, it's the Eucharist. It's the Eucharist. It's the one thing that no other church has. The okay, so I'm going to keep playing that role then. So yeah, but but I mean, what makes— what makes your communion service so special? Like at my church, let me tell you about my church. Okay, I'm just, I'm, everyone, you know, I'm playing a role. Yep. Um, man, we have got the best music. And the drummers, I mean, they got electric guitars, and, and it's just really good. And our, and our pastor is so cool. What he does is he sets uh, like a communion table on the side of the church with the bread and the water there, uh, bread and the Kool-Aid there, I mean, the j- grape juice. And whenever you want to, sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't, you can... Ha- you can get your communion uh, or, or not, or, you know, every eight week if you want to. Uh, you know, I don't get why you put so much emphasis on I mean, all you guys do is talk about the Eucharist. I don't get why that's so important to you. Let's go back into Scripture and look at what, what it says about the Eucharist. At the, at the Last Supper, Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. We rewind a few chapters back and look at when Jesus spoke to the crowds and he told them about he was the flesh, he was the bread. And when they walked away and didn't believe him, he didn't say, well, well time out. Okay, you guys don't understand, man, I'm a representation of it. He didn't say that. He let them walk away. Because he knew what he meant. He knew what he was instituting at the Last Supper. And the reason, you know, I'm sure you have a lovely church service, but the reason that you have to fill it with the drummer and the guitar player and and the bells and whistles is because you don't have that reality. So come come over and check it out. Wow. That's so well said, Pete. The reason why you have to fill that hour and a half or whatever it is with drum solos and, and singing and and all of that fanfare is because you don't have the Eucharist, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. No one. It's interesting because if if you if you go to a if you go to this this and there's a specific church I'm thinking of where they have the communion just sitting off to the side. If you go to a church where they celebrate communion once a month, uh, you actually are not receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ. You're right. It isn't because it needs to be done by someone who Mm -hmm. is within apostolic succession. So no wonder they don't think it's the community, it's the body and blood of Jesus because it isn't. That's right. But here's the thing about my church, Pete, that you don't know about. I'm playing a role. You guys, we are, (laughs) we are a Bible believing church. You know, we only go, we only do, we only go by what the Bible says. The Catholic church, you know, you don't do that. You guys don't even ever, you guys don't even know what the Bible is. You don't ever even read any scriptures. Okay. Well, we get the complete set of scriptures in a three-year cycle what does that uh, in mean? our church, read at Mass. Uh, we read the scriptures at Mass every day over a three-year period, and we get through the entire Bible that way. So we hear the word compl- proclaimed at Mass, every Mass. The other thing that you need to realize is to go back into your history books and look. The Catholic Church is who assembled the Bible. Now, it was up to that point conveyed via tradition and word of mouth because they didn't have printing presses. They couldn't afford it, so they told it. They told the stories verbally. Early Christians did. Then they compiled the Bible. What happened was some people, some men, splintered off from the church because they couldn't accept some of the teachings that had been known to be true for hundreds of years. So they created their own Bible with their own versions. So what your church has is a man-made Bible and not the one that was originally compiled under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit that led people to compile that that uh, set of books into one volume. No, we got to take the a other- break here. we got to take a break here, Pete. We'll come back and talk about that. I love that. Every Catholic should be able to answer these questions. Uh, Pete Sox, uh, my, my, our good friend who's been a warrior for Deep Adventure Ministries, our, our ministry has a ministry of his own. Uh, We'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know what just happened today is uh, before I started recording this interview, is there was a rocket launch. There was supposed to be a rocket launch here. I'm in Cocoa Beach. I live here about half the year. 
And from my balcony here on the ocean, I can see those rockets take off. But the launch was aborted. The rocket never fired. And that's what I feel like a lot of us, maybe a lot of you, uh, in your life right now, God has given you a spiritual, rational soul with the ability to be lit on fire, to, uh, to know God, to actually have a personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, to be fully human is, 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 to be, is, to have that, is to have the fuel of the Holy Spirit in you. In the rocket, there was a problem loading the fuel. Um, if you don't have fuel and you don't have the ignition, that rocket oh, it looks like a rocket, but what is it doing? It's just sitting there on the launch pad. You don't get launched as a human being until you've surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, invited him in to be your personal Savior and uh, become part of the body of Christ, become baptized and entered into full communion with the church. Uh, then that's where you get your wings. But a human being who doesn't know Jesus uh, is not, I hate to say it, is not fully human. It's like a rocket sitting on a launch pad that never launches. Uh, and, you know, there's the words of, the, of Scripture, St. Paul, love him. His favorite word wasn't Jesus. His favorite word he used the most in Scripture wasn't love. Uh, it was the word dynamos, dynamite, power. When you give your life to Jesus, he fills you with his love, which is, which is also to say his power, so that you can overcome that area in your life that's been just dragging you down into the pits to give you the power and the grace to live a life that you are meant to live. And uh, so to that end, we have our radio show, and that's why we have our guest. My good friend, Bear, my good friend uh, Pete Sox is here. He takes, care of the Deep Adven- he takes care of us at Deep Adventure Ministries on our email, but uh, also has a really profound uh, ministry. One of the greatest things you do is the review of your books on, the, on Off the Shelf. Pete Sox, welcome back. Thanks, Bear. Okay, so you were saying we're pre- pretending now we're in this church crisis and people want to come up and kind of see I told you so sort of moment, right? Mm-hmm. You're, as a Catholic, uh, defending your faith. And uh, they say, uh, well, you know, we're Bible believer. Our church is Bible believing. Right. Well, what are yeah. the first, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Well, just to, to wrap up what we had said there at the last segment, the other, the other flip side of that is, okay, the other problem is you're interpreting the Bible on your own, not with the magisterium and the tradition of the church, where we have the church followers telling us what that initial text meant. Uh, you're self-interpreting, and and I've actually gotten into debates uh, with people. Uh, one particular one was a Baptist, where I'm like, okay, fine, well, that's your interpretation. That's good to two doors down from you, knock on that door and see what that guy says it is, because his church is telling him something different. So that's that's the that's the scary part when people self-interpret, um, and aren't using the tradition in the magisterium that has so faithfully guided the church for 2,000 plus years. And even those who are self-interpreting, they're really not. They've heard something, they've been, they've been taught something by someone that right. guided them down that sort of philosophy or that way of looking at Scripture. You know, good old Martin Luther, who, mm-hmm. who, who his statement was, you know, we need to wash our hands in the blood of the priests and the, 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 uh, the, the nuns and monks. Uh, him and Zwingli, they go, you know, this, the Bible's easy to learn, Pete. It's easy to understand. Anybody can read it. You should be able to figure it out for yourself. And then Zwingli and him had this big old uh, breakup because they couldn't agree on what a certain passage of Scripture right. meant. So I think it's, yeah, but, but you know, I'm an American, you know. I, I want to be my own pope. I, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. need anybody telling me <laughs> what to do, right? Okay, here's another thing that I hear uh, uh, people say to you, say to Catholics. You got too many rules. Yeah. I don't want to join the church. You got too many rules. What do you say to that? Well, if we didn't have road rules on the highway, you'd be running your vehicles into each other all the time too. There's reasons for rules to protect yourselves from, from harm. Um, and you know, again, uh, to, to have a faith without rules, uh, you're going to open yourself up to letting some stuff in. You don't really want in, and then you're going to have a problem getting rid of it. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, we have rules on the highways. We have rules about, about how to treat other people and the laws that we follow and they're necessary. Uh, rules are necessary. Yeah. And I, it's, it's, it's hypocritical too, but you know, I will say this, um, thank God that we have rules. Yeah. The Catholic church is the only one left standing basically that is 
doesn't believe in contraception. Oh, the Catholic Church is not an LGBTQ or whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't support that. We love people that, and we have mercy on people and want to help people that have same-sex attraction. But we haven't changed the moral teaching on marriage. You know, um, we've stayed the course. We, you know, because they actually are a Bible-believing church. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we, yeah. we don't. Yeah, we're not wishy-washy. Uh, we may not always be good at keeping the rules that we or the the principles, the way that we live. As G.K. Chesterton said, there's more hypocrites in the Catholic Church than anywhere else in the world, because we don't change our philosophy to to, to suit our, our right. Our, yeah. Go ahead. Exactly. Man. I know you got. I, I mean, that's exactly right. We don't. That's the problem that we see with with the LGBTQ movement is they want to well, they want us to change our rules to satisfy their lifestyle, whether we think that lifestyle's right or wrong. And again, we have to have mercy on them. We have to have love for them. And and being homosexual isn't the sin; it's the action that's the sin. There's Eve Tushnet read a great book a couple years ago. Uh, uh, I can't remember the the name of the book, but she was writing about she's she's homosexual and she was writing about being celibate in the Catholic faith. That's 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 what it's all about. You know, as as we're both married men, we can't go out here and, and just freely do whatever we want with another woman. We made a commitment to to one woman in our lives. It's it's no different. It's no different. Uh, well, if you're again, single, if you're single, um, well, you're, it's a commitment to celibacy until married. It, right. You know, the, the, the only thing about uh, the whole same sex attraction thing is it's 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 not natural. And right. what's sad what's sad right now is that um, in the church. Uh, there's been an under underground, they call it the homosexual mafia. This has kind of invaded the church yeah. and yep. we have to make a stand. If you're going to be a Catholic priest, then we, 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 we want you to live by your vow of celibacy. Um, if you are, if you do have same sex attraction, you probably shouldn't be a priest, uh, unless you've been able to, uh, you know, get some healing in that area and find out, I mean, I'm not going to, mm-hmm. but I mean, people who come into the church who I, I remember, I, Two people that I know that had become priests uh, in my lifetime that were had same sex attraction, and I didn't know what to do about it. You know, when I was a, when I was nineteen years old, and then again about five years ago. I mean, what do I do? Do I go to my bishop and tell him you can't do this because how can I prove that they uh, you know that they mm-hmm. act out on you know that sort of thing? Nowadays, we need to be able to to uh, stand our ground with that, and I honestly think that the Catholic Church could end up losing its nonprofit status. Oh uh, yeah, because we won't, uh, we cannot have uh, people people with same sex attraction in as priests, and so we mm-hmm. could very well lose our our our, our non profit status. But we have to draw the line. But when I'm around people that have same sex attraction issues, the thing about it is, um, they're we the church never calls them homosexual or gay because they identify them more by the fact that they're made in the image of God and that they have incomparable right. worth. And, they're, and we know that they have incomparable worth because they're made in God's image, and Jesus even came to earth, took on the nature of man. Uh, but I, but I, I look, I see their lives, and they seem so hard. Their mm-hmm. lives seem so hurtful and so hard, and God wants us to be happy. And the right. way of happiness is to do his commandments. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, me, it, it, mm, go ahead, Pete. It's, it's, a real pro, it's a real struggle right now in the church. And i got to tell you, Barry, I'm at ground zero. I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania right. Harrisburg Diocese, man. Yeah. We are at ground zero. And one of the things that has upset me the most is when the when the grand jury report first broke, the church portrayed that as a pedophilia problem, and it's not. Mm. There are some underage children in that report, but the majority of the children or the majority of the victims were not children. And it's it's a homosexual problem in the priesthood. McCarrick was not preying on children. He is preying on seminarians that were adults. That were vulnerable, the, but they were vulnerable. Yeah. And I was right. just reading in the catechism today in my teaching, they t- talked about scandal. That's where we are as I teach every morning. Mm-hmm. And about, especially if you're in a position of authority, working with yes. someone who's vulnerable, then there of all places. So. My friend, we, we got to reschedule another another radio interview soon. Ah, because for sure. We, uh, where can they find you, Pete Socks? Uh, they can find my off-the-shelf podcast at breadboxmedia.com, where we have 45 shows right now under one umbrella. Uh, they can also find my book reviews at catholicbookblogger.com. 
We're talking with uh, Pete Sox. He's the one who sends out our weekly newsletter, uh, among all the other ministry things that he does. He's the leader of a That Man Is You program in his church. Uh, but if you want to get that weekly newsletter, uh, go to deepadventure.com and click on subscribe, and you'll get that every Saturday morning. And in there, you'll, you'll be receiving uh, a link to the radio show and, uh, Saturday morning that's produced on YouTube, and you'll get it before, you even, uh, before it's even aired on EWTN. Pete, thanks for coming and being with us. You're welcome, Bear. It was fun. Okay, until next time, this is Bear Wozniak. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, well done. Okay. I got to talk to my son here for a second. All right. Okay, thanks, Pete. I'm going to go, we'll yeah. go ahead and end this because I got to reconnect with him. But okay. thank you so Sounds much. Good. Thank You're you so welcome, much. Buddy. I'm going I'm to write to you and see if maybe you can interview me at some point on my show. Okay. Yeah, we can do yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're All looking right, good. Merry Christmas. Thanks. You too, bud. Okay. Same to you. All right. Tell Cynthia I said hi. I will. Aloha. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.